Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 27 of the Past Masters series, volume 2, 2, 2, 2. Um, I'm doing a study after a painting by George Ness today. It, his painting is called Sunset in the Woods. My painting is called Steady after sunset in the woods. <laughs> anyway, hey, before I forget, you know you're gonna like this video, so go ahead and smash that like button. Really appreciate that. It lets YouTube know that people like this, and they'll hopefully throw it at some other people that might like it. Also, this painting is gonna be for sale in my store for a really good price, and uh, I've been uh, rolling out, um, trying to. Um, sync up the store with the videos and that's been working out real good for me and for collectors of my stuff and uh, let me tell you this study I'm so proud of it and uh, I made a special effort just to do some I only had four or five paintings around the pho photograph but I, I set up my little photography studio in the garage last night and got her done just for you today uh, because um, well, I've been anxious to share it ever since I finished it, which was about two weeks ago. Uh, I think I just did a, a, a really a good job. It's not a, exactly like his painting in every detail, but I feel that I really did a good job of capturing the spirit of his painting. And um, before I sat down to do this video today, I, I, I actually rarely do anything except wing it on these, but I was thinking, well... This painting's so cool. I wonder. I wonder if anyone's written about it, you know. And uh, so I put it in the DuckDuckGo, and not really anything. Um, and I tipped on over to Google. Not really anything. I mean, the painting's well known. There's quite a few reproductions of it around online, but uh, uh, no one really writing about it. Then I thought, well, maybe, maybe in one of my books I have. You know, I probably have like six books on George Ness and. Uh, Sure enough, this is one of my favorite books on Georgian S. It's called um, Just Plain Georgian S. It's by Nikolai Sikorsky Jr. And um, this book uh, was originally published in 1985. There was a, a big giant retrospective of Vanessa's work at that time. And uh, I think this one I'm looking at was probably reprinted in the 90s. But uh, you can pick up this book um, on Amazon Used, and I, if you're a fan of Vaness and his work, I highly recommend you do so, because uh, Nikolai is a brilliant writer, and maybe the best writer on Vaness. It's hard to say. I really love um, what uh, David, a. David A. Cleveland has to say about Vaness as well in his book on American tonalism, but... Um, he should have both, yeah. Anyway, let's read a little bit from this book. Since um, uh, I was lucky enough to find this, um, uh, it, that, that this was in the book, and that not only has Nikolai written about the painting, but we have a few words from George Vaness himself coming to us from 120 years in the past, right? And he says some things that I agree with so strongly, and uh, I think you'll really get something from this, too. So, this is from page 184 of the book. I think this is Color Plate, number 54, Sunset in the Woods, uh, signed 1891. The original painting was uh, 48 by 70 inches. That is big. Much bigger than my little 7 by 10. <laughs> uh... It's in the collection of the Kokaran Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And Nikolai goes on to write here, and that said a great deal about art in general, but very little about particular paintings. That is not surprising. A painting, he believes, should disclose its meaning unaided, unaided by titles and explanations. One that told its story properly in pictorial terms, as any worthwhile painting must could have no equivalent in words. Very true, that, by the way. But he did say something about this painting. He wrote about it in the year it was finished. The motif for this picture was taken from a sketch made near Hastings, Westchester, in New York. 
over 20 years ago. I commenced this picture several years since, but until last winter I had not obtained any idea commensurate with the impression received on the spot. The rocks in general formation are like the place, but the trees, especially the beach, are increased in size. The idea is to represent an effective light in the woods towards sundown, but to but also to allow the imagination to predominate. Wow, how powerful is that? That means a lot to me because I'm interjecting here. <laughs> uh, getting imagination into your work is really the thing you want to do. We don't need we don't need copies of photos executed in oil paint. The world doesn't need that. And and don't be fooled by the artists that do that and then sell their work. It's not going to last. If it's not moving, if it doesn't have the human element in it, then it, it was probably better off just as a photo, if you ask me. That's my two cents. Anyway, Nikolai goes on to write here. And this wrote of the long distillation process this painting underwent, perhaps not because it was a process unique to it, but far from being singular, was a process that most of his late paintings underwent. But he must have written of it too because it embodied a lesson on the relationship, indirect and essentially distant, between art and nature, and how a sensation of nature was transformed by time, protracted thought, and arbitrary, arbitrary artistic reformation into a subjective imaginative experience of art. What a sentence, my goodness. Wow. What else could we hope to do? This is like, this is the sentence, that paragraph is, is a distill, distil, distil, I'm sorry, I'm getting a brain hiccup here. Distillation of tonalism in one paragraph. When people wonder, well, what's the difference between tonalism and impressionism? Well, impressionism isn't like that. Impressionism is you, you're getting a, a direct impression of nature and you're doing your best to execute a certain light effect or a certain quality of light. Whereas um, the tonalist approach is a poetic interpretation through the fil filter of human consciousness and that's very very different. It's a very very different motive that you have for executing the painting. And the thing that Nikolai points out here that I think is really super um, interesting and important is the gap between the inspiration you took from nature and the execution of the painting. Okay, you can't just copy nature and hope that you're going to get across that feeling that nature inspired in you. It doesn't work like that. It could take 20 years, it could take 20 minutes, it doesn't, that's not the, the crucial thing. The crucial thing is to have the right intention and be prepared to do what it takes to execute it. That's my two cents as a modern day totalist. Anyway, um, like I said though, uh, I'm really proud of this painting. It's been in my studio for the last couple weeks. Pretty much anyone coming into my studio has been like, oh my god, that's that's incredible. I love that. And, um, yeah, I always say, yeah, I mean, I'm, I really love it too. And uh, I should point out, actually, you can see we've been going on for quite a while now. Usually my drawing stage would be a distant memory. Um, but I probably spent uh, well over an hour or more working on the <coughs> drawing stage of this. In fact, uh, so much so that I know uh, when I painted this, I actually painted a lot of it in, then went to lunch, came back, and did even more on the drawing stage. So this is one of the most finished underpaintings uh, I think I've ever done. Um, and the reason for that is because um, because of the uh, the colors in the underpainting, they're, they're not very far off from um, the colors in George Ness's painting, so I knew, well, if I get this right, all I really do need to do is start bringing in color, which is what you see me doing now, and these colors are variations. Uh, pr pretty much everyone's keyed off of raw umber in some way, shape, or form. Um, 
and it goes on like that <coughs> right up until we get to the uh, the birch tree um, that is the focal point <coughs> pardon me getting a little frog in my throat here um, so it just made sense to to spend a lot of time getting the drawing um, as good as I could now it's not completely accurate to George's painting as a matter of fact there's <laughs> there's some trees missing you know but I didn't have um, 48 by 70 inches to work with and that to me I've never done a painting that large uh, I would love to try though um, they're, they're working on my new studio and uh, uh, well they haven't done any work lately but sooner or later it's gonna get done it's bound to happen and when it does um, I've got an area, I will have an area there where I can put some pretty large work. And uh, not this large though, geez, uh, but larger, you know. And um, I'm not even sure how I'm going to videotape that or, or anything, but you can bet that I'm going to try. And uh, that'll be quite interesting uh, for, uh, for me and hopefully for you too as you uh, uh, join me, hopefully, in that, uh, you know that process of uh, doing some larger things and I've had in my brain I might do a few larger studies after the uh, toneless masters I I've had requests from from um, galleries and uh, some patrons to, to, to do that but I've always said eh, you know in fact it was like really almost like pulling teeth for me to even go this large it's only seven by ten inches but I have done I think uh, if you look at this channel maybe two hundred 225 five by seven studies after the masters and it wasn't until just this last year uh, that I got into these um, larger ones and really been enjoying it and really been enjoying um, going after some of my favorite uh, toneless paintings and uh, uh, sometimes I get questions from people it's like well why do you do that why don't you just do everything you know original that you do and um, uh, there's a couple reasons. Uh, the main one being is that uh, because I'm I'm self-taught. Uh, in fact, as a painter, uh, almost completely self-taught. I had books and I had DVDs, but I never have had a, a, a painting teacher um, or really a drawing teacher for that matter. Uh, um, but because of that, uh, I feel like there's a um, a big hole in my education and. Uh, I choose to fill it with studies after the masters and I think uh, you'll see if you look at art history you'll see there's quite a few people that have uh, done this and um, that's reason number one reason number two is because it makes me better as a painter and I can't think of anything I've done that's had a more dramatic impact on my work than making studies after the masters um, my work has always been pretty good um, but it definitely got much, much better after, um, well, at first I did the 100 Days of Tonalism project and my work just took a giant leap forward from that and um, I've continued to see gains and uh, when you um, when you hit a certain level as a painter or I think in any field, it's like when you start getting to some degree of mastery to to, to really push on forward to even greater heights it becomes increasingly difficult you can uh, you can make quite a lot of gains when you're starting out you know going from amateur to to somebody that's doing things that look pretty good um, but when you achieve a certain level of mastery that's when it gets tougher to to move forward um, you run into a lot of walls like uh, you know um, your intellect being one wall, your ability to perceive line, form, and color um, and accurately and um, creatively uh, render and incorporate those in, in, in your own work. Um, let's face it, we're all, you know, beings that are defined by our limitations, right? So once you get to, when you're getting to the outside edge of uh, what you can do, uh, you have to work um, sometimes ten times harder just to make small advancements and uh, doing the studies has enabled me to make some uh, advancements where um, I don't think I would have been able to otherwise uh, regardless of how many of uh, my own paintings I, I put together so 
hopefully that answers that question for for those of you that are um, curious about why I do this and uh, heck you know I do I mean I've dedicated a month out of this uh, last year to doing this and there'll probably be another month down the road here or there and uh, you know I wonder about it it's like uh, hmm well that's one of the reasons why I put these in my store now and why I decided to sell them I've always sold my master's studies but I've never actually put them in my store before but uh uh, I have had like specific requests people have made of me to do studies after paintings and uh, uh, on a commission basis I've done that kind of thing if, if I'm into the painting I'm happy to do it if I'm not into the painting uh, he couldn't get me to do it I have an allergy after all those years of uh, being a commercial artist I pretty much just I have to be in um, I don't like that word inspired but uh, I guess it's probably the appropriate word I have to be inspired yeah Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end here. Um, hi, uh, sorry about that. Uh, you know what, this video is going to go a little long because um, when I got to the end of my recording I realized that uh, I did not have the final two painting sessions <laughs> archived properly, which I've done now, so everything's there and uh, you, from your standpoint it wouldn't look like much has changed, but had to get in and do some wing dingling and fang dangling and uh, making it all work. Anyway, thank you for joining me today for this video. Please like if you haven't and uh, go check it out on my blog and my store. Um, I'll be back real soon with another video. Uh, meanwhile, please do me a favor. Please take good care and stay out of trouble. <laughs>